Welcome back to Microsoft Access 2010 Beginner Level 1. For more free lessons on Microsoft Access, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. In Lesson 2, we'll discuss planning your database. What tables do you need? What fields should go in each table? What do you want your forms and reports to look like? The first thing to do when planning a new database is to sit down with a piece of paper or a whiteboard and write down exactly what you want the database to do. Plan this out in advance. Make a list of all of the features that you want included in your database. What kinds of information do you want to store? Do you want to store customer information? Be able to track correspondence with those people? Generate mailing labels to your customers? Create quotes and invoices? store each of your customers order history, track employee timesheets, maintain a product inventory and perhaps even print out your product catalog straight from your database, basic accounting, accounts receivable, accounts payable. Whatever you want your database to do, make a big list and write everything down. Now once you've decided all of the things you want your database to be able to do, sit down and determine what kinds of tables you're going to need. Remember, tables store the data in your database. You want all of one kind of information in the same table. So for example, we're going to track information on our customers, so we'll need a customers table. I want to track information on products, so I'm going to need a products table. Products and customers are two totally unrelated things, so each gets its own table, just like employees employees get their own table. I'm also going to create an orders table. Now orders may be related to products and customers because customers will purchase products and those will go into orders but the order information itself will go in its own table. An order is its own kind of entity. Now we'll talk a lot more about relationships between tables in future classes. But for now, I want you to put everything that stands on its own in its own table. Now that you've got an index card for all of the tables that you want in your database, go through each table and write down a list of the different types of fields that you'd like to have in each table. Remember, each specific item of information is considered a field. If you were putting this into an Excel spreadsheet, a field would be a column of data. So for example, I have basic information about my customer, first name, last name, address, city, state, zip code or postal code, phone number, and fax number. There's also some additional information I'd like to keep track of. For example, is this customer on my mailing list? How long has he been a customer, which I call customer sense? what's this customer's credit limit, his email address, and then any other extraneous notes that I might want to track about this customer. Make sure that you're as specific as possible when defining your fields. For example, you don't want just one field to track name and put first name and last name together in it. That's poor database design. It's very difficult later on if you want to pull some information out. For example, if you want to sort by last name and you've got first name and last name together in that field, it's very difficult to sort just on last name. Or if you're writing letters and you want to say, Dear Joe, you have first name and last name together, so again, it's very difficult to separate them. Whereas it's easier to put stuff together, so if you have first name and last name separated, you can easily put them together. The same rule applies for address. Don't just have address 1, address 2. You want address, city, state, postal code. I've seen some databases that actually separate the street number from the street name. So you have 101 Main Street separated. That level of complexity is completely up to you. But you want to break down the information as much as possible within reason. Now you might notice when writing down my field names, I didn't put any spaces between first and name. Access databases work better if you don't use spaces in the field names. I'll explain why in much more detail later on when we get to our advanced classes.
But when you start writing VB code and macros and SQL statements, if you have field names and table names with spaces in them, things start to get really messy. So capitalize first and name, but put them together without a space between them. You'll see the same rule applies to mailing list, customer sense, credit limit, and postal code. You'll also notice in my customer table I do not have any fields to store information on the customer's orders. For example, I've seen some people build databases where in their customer table they'll have order 1, order 2, order 3. That's bad database design. You want that information regarding their orders to be in a separate order table. In the order table you track the details for those orders. The order date, the sales rep, the order total, the sales tax collected, whether or not it was delivered, and so on. This information gets stored in a separate table because now there's no limit to the number of orders that each customer can have. They may have no orders. They could have 50 orders. Whereas before, if you set the order fields inside the customer table, you're limiting the number of orders for each customer. Now, if this seems a little confusing, don't worry about it. We're going to spend a lot more time working with multiple tables and creating relationships between them once we get to our expert series. For today's class, we're just going to focus on the customer table, but I want you to be aware that you should store different types of data in separate tables. The next step is to get some paper and draw out the way your forms should look when your database is finished. Now as you can see I'm no artist but I do sit down and sketch out what I want each form to look like roughly on paper before I start building it. Do you want a main menu with some different buttons? Click on this button to open up the customer form, click on this button to open up the order form and so on. Then sketch out each of those forms. My customer info should have the details about the customer up top first name, last name, and so on. I'd like the customer's contact history at the bottom of the form. Every time I talk to that customer, we'll put some notes in there about what we talked about. Maybe a picture of the customer if it's available. So just take a few minutes and sketch out what you want your database to look like. Remember, keep in mind the skill level of the average user of your database. If you're building this database for other people to work with, you want to make it as simple and as user-friendly as possible for them. Plus, having your forms drawn out acts like a road map. You can see on paper what you should be designing on the screen, and it just makes it easier. The next step, gather together all of your printed reports. You probably have paper forms that you're using now, or at least reports you've been generating with Excel or Microsoft Word. Get those all together so you can see the different types of reports that you're going to need to generate from your database. For example, here I've got an accounts receivable report, an invoice, and some mailing labels. Make a list of all the different types of reports that you expect your database to generate. The bottom line here is plan ahead. A complex database takes a lot of planning. You don't want to start building your database and then realize later on that you made a simple mistake that would have been caught had you planned everything out in the beginning. The more planning you do ahead of time, the easier your job will be later when you start actually building your database. Now don't worry about laying out your queries at this point. Queries are usually something that you design on the fly. But do take the time to make yourself a list of tables, the fields needed in each one of those tables, a rough sketch of what forms you want and how you want your on-screen display to look and what reports the database should generate. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right now and also don't forget to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com youtube for more advanced lessons and other specials just for YouTube viewers.